as some of us today, we could have done better, but because we are used to the usual, so we don't allow God to do the unusual. Look at me. Whether your life is little or big, give God thanks. Whether your accommodation is big or small, give God thanks. You know why? There's somebody you are better than. Your case is not the worst. It's not the worst. And your case is not final. There's no story God no go change. Mark chapter number 8. Verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man. Or they brought a blind man unto him. And besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand. And led him out of town. When he had spats or spit on his eyes, he put his hand upon him and he asked him if he saw us. And he looked up and said, I see men as tree walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him to look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he said unto him, everybody, let's read this part 26, 26. Read with me very loud. One, two, go. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. Father, I ask again that you do a new thing. Show yourself awesome. Show yourself mighty. Do what you are good at doing. Perfect it in our lives. Give grace for zero to become hero. I thank you again and again because you hear me always. And everybody shout a better amen. The word Abiezer means father of help. The Bible says in the ninth month, the ninth captain is Abiezer, father of help. I want you to understand that I said yesterday again that nine is so significant to a pregnant woman. When a woman is pregnant, she starts counting from day one. What is she looking forward to? The ninth month. There's something about nine months. And I also want you to know that in that nine months, it may look as if the pain increase. But in that same nine months is where the gain is. The gain for her pain is in the ninth month. So she may cry. And I also realize again that in that same ninth month, the pregnant woman about to give birth begin to receive assistance from all directions. How? If you're walking along the road today, even if you are not a medical doctor, and you see a woman by the roadside about to give birth, I'm very sure you will not pass her by like that. I'm very sure you will try to render all assistance. She's not going to call you, but the situation on ground must call you. Because a woman that is pregnant may not need to solicit for any assistance. She's only doing her crying while others are craging around her. So that's why I know this month you will enjoy that help. Yeah. You will not ask for help. Help will ask for you. Yeah. Help will locate you. If you believe that, stand up and let your amen be to the people. So, I realize that help. When it says Abiezer, the captain of the ninth month, which simply means father of help. Now, I want you to know that when we talk about help in the kingdom today, Jesus is our main helper. And when he was going, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you without a helper. I am going to send another one in my place. Are you with me here today? He said he will help you. He will assist you. But it's just that sometimes some of us don't know the power behind that help we are talking about. So, if you are sitting here, shout, I hear you. I want to go straight to the topic today. There was a man, we are told, this man was blind. Whether born blind, but we know he was blind. 
And this man being a blind man, I wanted to know that he needed help. All along, he's been getting help from where? From men. But he has not actually gotten the right help from above. And this man, one day, his friends decide to take him to Jesus. And they took him there. I don't know what their intention was, but through the action of Jesus, I will be able to down, download what I think their action was or their intention was. When this, this man brought this blind man, they said, please lay your hand on him. Are you still with me here today? All right, I, I, I like to go through that scripture so that some of you can understand what I am saying. So, okay, fine. In verse 22, he said, he came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. So, all they wanted was a touch. They just said, touch him. Now, the question is, why will Jesus now take this man from them? Not only taking this man from them, he led the man out of town. He left the people within that town. But he left the man out of town. Two things happened. He did this. He took this man from them, led him out of where they were, and led him out of town. Now, why would Jesus do that? Number one, I realized that Jesus wanted to perform this miracle without his friends. He wanted to show these people that your original intention was not right about this man. And so, he took him out of town, and there... He did not touch him as they expected. The first thing Jesus told the man is, look up. Are you with me here today? What did he say? Look up. For they look up to him, their faces were lighting and they were not ashamed. Look up. Stop looking to man, but look up. So he made the man to look up. And when the man looked up, the next thing I will see there is that he asked the man, I said when he had spot on, okay, why? He asked the man, he said, he took the man by the hand and he took him out, led him out of town. And when he had spot on his eyes and he told him, look up. The next thing I also did was he spat on his eyes. Jesus spat on this man's eyes. Now I can tell you the reason why he led him away from his friends. He led him away from his friends because they could have hindered the miracle. They didn't bring Jesus, they didn't bring this man for Jesus to spit on him. They brought him to do what? So that he can touch. So if the method was going to change, I can tell you that these people will resist the miracle. These people will be the one that will make sure that they discourage this man from receiving his miracle. They are going to call him aside and say, why will he spit on you? It's an insult. After all, if he's truly a, 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 a healer, how come he need to spit? We brought him to you. I mean, to, we brought you to him. Not for him to spit on you. We brought you to him so he can touch you. But look at him. He's part on you. I can let you know that that would have provoked an unnecessary anger from the man and his miracle would have been frustrated. Let me pause here to let you know that there are many people today that their friends and association has stopped them from entering next level. And sometimes in our lives, if you are truly ready to enter next level, there are some association and friends you will dissociate from. Are you hearing me now? Example of what I saw is what Jesus just did. He took him away from this group of friends because he was going to do something unusual. He was not going to do the usual. He was not going to do what he expected. He was going to spit on this man. And that is where his miracle will come from. So he spat on him. And so, since there was nobody there to, to make this man to be angry, this man accepted it like that. And the next thing Jesus will say is look up. Then the number two thing he also did was that he led him out of town. Are you with me here today? Where is that town? The Bible called the place Bethsaida. Where is Bethsaida? That's the same place. Where, where in that same place, they call it Genesaret. That's the place where a madman has been there in the tomb for years. He left where human beings are. He went to be staying in burial ground. And this man was there frustrated for years. 
frustrated for years being in shout hallelujah. hallelujah I did not hear you I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah he was there for years frustrated and we are told that nobody could pass that way he was being held down with chain crying and groaning nobody came to his aid nobody came to his assistance until Jesus appeared on the scene and the Bible said this man ran to Jesus and bowed that was the end of that malady today in the name that is above every name whatever is that thing that has been troubling you I declare it's coming to an end today if his sickness is coming to an end today if his affliction is coming to an end today I say it's coming to an end today receive grace to see clearly receive grace to see clearly receive grace to see clearly I say you are seeing clearly. I say you are seeing clearly. Let that amen be better than your neighbor. Apart from leading him out of his friends, he also led him out of town. So let us look at that town critically. I also realize that there are some, there are some location that can hinder some allocations. There are some location that can dislocate the true allocation. Let me tell you this here. A witch can be very nice to you, but they are the one killing you. They are the one taking you from place to place, pampering you, but they are killing you. They took this man. So Jesus took this man from them and said, no, you have been responsible for this man being blind. They may have been responsible for that man being blind, but he separated him from them, and not only that, he took them out of the town. Which town? The town where this man was made blind. Did you notice that after Jesus healed him, he said, don't return there. Are you with me here today? Don't return there means that don't go back to those friends. Don't go back to that location. Because that same chemical that made you blind is still available there. I don't know if somebody's understanding me this morning. Don't go back. Don't even go back. And one thing I want all of you to know, as God begins to lift you in life, be careful of your past. Be careful of the place where things was not working before. And be careful of some kind of behavior or behavioral pattern that kept you where you are. And so when you begin to see things opening up for you, it's time for you to tighten your bed and tell yourself, I will not go back. So what happened is, Jesus said to this man, look up. What did he say? Look up. And when we talk about looking up, I remember in John chapter 6, they needed food. There was nothing to eat. And Jesus said, give them to eat. They said, there is nothing. And somebody came, Nathaniel came for later and said, we have seen a little boy here with five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Jesus took it from them. The next thing we tell them, he told all of them, sit down. And Jesus lifted it up and look up. Am I communicating here? He lifted it up and gave thanks. What did he do? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. Let me let you understand. For you to keep enjoying that help from above, remove your eyes less from man and more to God. More to God, learn to live an appreciative life. A life full of appreciation. A life that shows that things are getting better with you. It's not getting bitter. Did you hear what I'm saying? If you are not seeing things working for you, there is no way things will work. Begin to see that it's getting better. Jesus lifted up five loaves and two fishes. It's enough for him to be angry. It's not for him to say, excuse me, I told you I needed food and you are giving me five loaves to feed 5,000 men. How dare you do that? He did not. With the little one, he gave thanks. Look at me. Whether your life is little or big, give God thanks. Whether your accommodation is big or small, give God thanks. You know why? There's somebody you are better than. Did you hear what I'm saying here? What did I say? Always remember this anywhere you are. There's somebody you are. Your case is not the worst. It's not the worst. And your case is not final. There's no story God not going to change. Now only the time, not different. Am I preaching to someone this morning? If you still hear me, shout, I hear you. So Jesus led this man out of town. He led him out of town. Out of town, there yeah, talks about out of tradition. That same town, there may have been some traditional method of doing things. There may have been some traditional belief. There may have been some things that is associated with that town. 
But Jesus led him out. He led him out. And not only led him out, he also led him out of friends. I will ask you again, which friend is in your life that is monitoring your life? He led him out. This man may have been carrying him up and down. I remember some years ago, a particular woman was carrying the son, I mean the son, his own son, from place to place, place to place, place to place. The guy, the guy was sick. The child was sick. He was carrying from place to place, place to place. And this child was not getting well. Was not getting well. And he took him again to another doctor. And this, this doctor is a born again child of God. Instead of healing, he started addressing this woman. And he said to this woman, he said, what till your picking do you? What till he do you? That's how this woman began to cry. He began to cry. He said, sir, the truth is that, not that I like to give my picking, but it's because I don't chop people own. And it's compulsory I must give. But don't forget, she's the one carrying the child from place to place, from hospital to hospital, from prayer home to prayer home. But he met the wrong doctor. Are you, are you sure you're hearing me now? So you can see what Jesus did here. These people brought someone for healing, but Jesus took the person from them and left them in the same place. After healing them, he said, oh boy, just from here, they run, go, not go back there. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here. He said, you see from here now, just they go, my Lord. Don't, don't even bother to go and share your testimony. Look at me here. Don't share testimony to, your, to those who are doing you. Stop reporting yourself. Read the scripture. He led him out of town. I want to ask again, which tradition do you need to separate from? Which belief do you need to separate from? What kind of, and another lead him out of town also may have been a, what I call comfort zone. What did I say? Oh, the worst thing that can happen to anybody is to try to separate you from your comfort zone. If there's anything that has stopped people from becoming who they will be, it's what I call that place called comfort. And there's no place called comfort zone on earth. The only comfort zone that will be comfort and comfortable in later is heaven. On earth, there's no comfort zone. But people make it out of it. They tell you comfort zone. So this man may have been led out of his comfort zone. There are some of us today, we could have done better, but because we are used to the usual. So we don't allow God to do the unusual. If you are still hearing this, shout, I hear you. I hope you are writing down these things. Used to the usual and not allowing God to do the unusual. Write it down somewhere. If you are hearing me shout, I hear you. So ladies and gentlemen, he led him out of town. He led him out of comfort zone. There are times in our lives that comfort zone has not really made things to be comfortable. And yet we are still attached to it. And they pretend as if they are for you. But Jesus was not fooled. He led him out. He led him out. Are you all still with me here today? And immediately he got out. The miracle time started. The next thing we do was to spit on this man. You know one thing about God? Sometimes God may need to humble you before he starts this in your life. He may need to humble you. He wants to check your level of temperament. He wants to check whether you have put it in place. He will look at this man. He's part on him. Ladies and gentlemen, if his friends were there, I hope you know what they will do. They will pop up this man in anger. Excuse me, let us leave here. We are leaving this church now. How can he talk to you like this? How can he do this to you? He let him out of town. And when he let this man out and his miracle started. In the name that is above every name. Anything that kept you where you are. As you are shouting amen, I separate that thing from you. Amen. Anything that is trying to hold you down from becoming who God said you will be. I say I separate it from you. 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 Receive help from above. Receive help from above. Receive help from above. I say receive help. I say divine help. Supernatural help. Supernatural lifting. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. He led him out of town. And he said, how do you see? He said, I see men like trees. Not trees, but they are even walking. 
Ayakurama. When tree come begin the waka, lift up your hand as I pray for you. May you begin to see life clearly. May you begin to see things clearly. You will no longer see things upside down. You will no longer see life upside down. What God gave you, you will utilize it properly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive grace to be on top. Receive grace to soar. Receive grace to soar. It's your season to soar. Let that amen be better. Please sit down. When he led him out of town, what was he demonstrating? That was 2 Corinthians 5 17. If any man be his what? He was giving him a new environment. A new environment to start afresh. A new environment for you to display who God says you will be. A new environment for you to function in God's function. So he took him through that new, new environment. And that is one, uh, what I want, thing I want all of you to understand. That as God begins to help you, as you begin to see some things happen, please be careful of your old environment. Be careful of that thing you call comfort zone. I've asked, I've seen some people, uh, why can't you say, oh, now here all my friends day. Now here all my friends day. And there are some of you as I'm talking, every evening on weekend, you must go and hang out where your friends are. You have to go and hang out where your friends are. Let me let you know, you are not doing yourself good. You are not doing yourself good because that is the place where they are doing you. And I lift up my hand, you will not eat poison. Uh, I say you will not eat poison. I say you will not eat poison, oh. No. Which, witches will not bewitch you. Let that amen be better. Please sit down. He led him out of town. And after perfecting the healing, he said to this man, don't go back. But that did not happen until he gave him a second touch. The first touch was seeing men as three walking. The second touch is now seeing things clearly. Began to see things the way it should be. And in the kingdom, every one of us need a second touch all the time. You know one thing about Moses? Moses was able to not able to make the promised land because why? He was still believing in the old touch, not the second touch. God said to Moses, when you get to this rock, he said, speak to this rock. He didn't say he should strike the rock, but when Moses got there, he struck the rock. Why? Because that is the usual. Are you with me here today? But not knowing that God is no longer in that aim address. God left that level long time. But that stopped Moses. And God said to Moses, I told you to speak to the rock and you struck the rock. Moses, your journey ends here. You will see the promised land, but you will not enter. So everything that Moses labored for, labor, uh, Moses could not enter. Why? Because he was always dealing with God based on the past. There are some of you listening to the sound of my voice as I'm preaching to you this morning. I want to declare that same place where they are doing you. That same place where they are doing you. That same place where you report yourself to. Anything that is dragging you back there, I disconnect it. Amen. I did not hear you. I say I disconnect it. Amen. Today, receive grace to function. Amen. This week, receive grace to get there. Receive grace for dominion. I say go and have dominion. I say go and take over. It's your season to take over. You will never be stopped. You will never be garage. From now, you are reigning again. From now, you are rising again. I speak the blessings of the Lord. He's going with you here. You are coming with testimony. The grace never to return to where you failed. Receive it now. The grace never to report yourself to those who are doing you. Receive it now. The grace to sit and live a holy life. Receive it now. I speak the blessings of God over your life. You will not be a casualty. You will not be a failure. I bless you today. Go and reign. Go and rule. Dominion. Success. Victory. Is waiting for you. Let that amen be louder.